Year and On is a love poem, and the man that it is written to is far away. It's about the process of missing and wanting. Year and On. I want you to feel the unbearable lack of me. I want your skin to yearn for the soft lure of mine. I want those hints of red on your canvas to deepen in passion for me, carmine, burgundy. I want you to keep stubbing your toe on the memory of me. I want your head to be dizzy and your stomach in a spin. I want you to hear my voice in your ear, to touch your face, imagining it is my hand. I want your body to shiver and quiver at the mere idea of mine. I want you to feel as though life after me is dull and pointless and very, very aggravating. That with me, you were lifted on a current you waited all your life to find and had despaired of finding. As though you were wading through a soggy swill of inanity and ugliness every minute we are apart. I want you to drive yourself crazy with the fantasy of me and how we will meet again, against all odds, and there will be tears and flowers and the vast relief of not I, but us. I am haunting your dreams, conducting these fevers from a distance, a distance that leaves me weeping and storming and bereft. Right, this poem, Stitching, uh, was, was very much praised at one point um, by a man I greatly admire, Brenda Connelly. So I'm reading this for him now. But it was written originally for my grandmother, Marjorie Troop, who was a fantastic needlewoman and taught me how to darn, and I'm very grateful to her for that. But in her last years, she became very muddled in her mind. Stitching. I send my needle through raveled wool, catching the loose ends into a cross-hatched darn. This is how your freckled hands smooth the worn spot over the wooden mushroom. Pigeon-breasted in your mustard dress, you bent your head, snicking in the needle tip, your fingers light and careful, as you impressed upon me the importance of learning how to sew. Your favourite backdrop, a soprano soaring from the gramophone, the sun sweeping in from the garden, flouncing yellow swathes over your shoulder. I have the quilt you made. My limbs are lapped in its glowing sunflower heads, your last opus left for your daughter to finish and me to admire. Tomorrow the quilt will be packed away, part of the unpicking of the home I stitched together. I will wander the empty rooms like you when your darning days were done and you woke up in a strange place, surrounded by strangers, pulled apart, the gap too wide for mending. Rootling is the title of poem of my new collection of poetry, and it's about my daughter breastfeeding, Phoebe. Rootling, little wrestler, you snort, snuffle and lunge, latching on like a cat, snatching and worrying her prey. Once attached, you drag on me like a cigarette, puffing between sucks, nose pressed close, somehow catching your wheezy breath. Between rounds, in your white wrap, you arch your back for a rub, like I'm your coach, readying you for newfound strength in the ring. Your fists flail, fingers hooking my nursing bra, your feet curl and kick, toes a feast of tiny action. There is nothing romantic in this vital ritual, yet I crane over you, a loose sack, liquid with the loss of your form, with the tears of labour and lolling hormones making me gush along with my womb, still churning out after birth. So when you dandle my nipple with a gummy smile, I tell myself your grins for me, even if you've got that look of a seasoned souse on his most delicious tipple. <laughs> 